One of the easiest ways to find people just like you is to hang out in places where you would hang out. But that doesn't mean your bedroom because there are not other people in your bedroom. <laughs> um, it does mean conventions. Conventions are one of the best places to meet people just like you. If you have a love of cars, going to car conventions will help you meet women or men or whatever it is that you're looking for who like car conventions. If you like video games, going to video game conventions is a great way to meet people. So I strongly recommend that you start moving in the circles that have the people that you want to meet. I've got a friend of mine who likes girls that are a little bit introverted but highly intelligent and usually in the medical field. And he will go and hang out at medical conventions. He's a filmmaker and he goes there specifically to try and land gigs doing corporate videos for doctors, but also uses it to meet women because he can make real connections with them. Um, and another student of mine who is, um, uh, she's only into women, she's been gay, uh, she thinks she was gay before she even touched puberty, um, which is probable because obviously she's herself, she knows these things. But um, she loves like um, modeling and acting and doing all that kind of thing. And she was a bartender in a small town in Texas. And after working with me, she got up, moved to LA and started hanging out with the girls that she was interested in because she had these connections about film and ended up becoming an actress in a big feature film. So it really can translate your life if you are willing to take these jumps to go and be around the people that you're gonna have real connections with. But just being around them doesn't help because if they're in a relationship and they don't want to talk to you because they're having a bad day, you've still got to work out how to approach somebody. And so what we're looking for is something called approach invitations. Um, if you go into any room, you will see the people that are hyper-focused on what they're doing and the people that want to be approached. And usually it's bored people. Bored people want to be approached. That doesn't mean we're saying they're single because that's not the indicator of whether they're single. They could be a single person who's hyper-focused on getting their work done and a bored person who's in a very committed relationship. But the hyper-focused person really doesn't want you to interrupt them, even though they're single. And the person who's in a relationship may not want to have sex with you, but they're gonna be much more open to talking to you. And so instead of trying to think, I'm gonna meet this person, make friends with them and have sex with them, it becomes more about, I'm gonna make friends. And then if sex is on the cards, sex is gonna be on the cards. And if it isn't, it doesn't matter. And it's about giving yourself the best opportunity for that to happen. I'm proud of the fact that I am in the friend zone with a lot of girls. And also, I have a lot of girls in the friend zone with me. But that doesn't mean we'll never have sex. Sex is still on the card. Sex never left. And that's the key to understanding how to operate the friend zone, which we're going to discuss later on. Right now, we're just going to discuss how we make the friends in the first place. Because if you don't even have them as friends, going up to some random stranger and putting sex on the cards may work, but it's very unlikely to. The odds of you approaching at the exact window when someone wants to meet you and wants to have sex with you is pretty low. Um, we can talk about testosterone just for a second. The average T count of a, uh, of a, of a fully functioning average male um, is somewhere between 1,500 to 2,000. Um, does anyone have an idea of what the average woman's T count is? I'm going from the top of my head. I haven't, read the, I haven't read the fact for a few years. But it's something like, I can tell you now that um, one of my girlfriends, uh, her T-count is 40-something. So compare female testosterone count, which is a big indicator of sex drive, is in the 40s, to the male testosterone count, 1,500 to 2,000. The difference in sex drive between men and women is insane. When a woman gets a spike, um, during her period, she'll get like really aroused and they often say they're like really horny in that build up during the ovulation period when they're like really, really like getting ready to have sex just before, just before they have their period. Um, their T count will spike by maybe three to five points. The average male is a hundred times that or more constantly. So our sex drive is very different to a woman's. What I'm trying to say is, in order to get a woman, when she just wants to have sex with you, you've really only got one week out of the month where they want to do that. And it might only be four days in reality. So you've got a 10% chance, not taking into consideration relationships, stress, work, exams, or, or family, or anything else going on, you've only got a 10% chance of catching her at that point where she's like, you know what, I just want to have sex. So you might as well give up on that whole idea of, I'm just gonna meet this person and have sex. 
Um, most of the students I've taught that are in lesbian relationships, sex becomes a thing, but it's really about, I find that person attractive, I wanna be with them. There is a sexual drive there, but their relationships are much more loving and caring first. And I mean, don't get me wrong, there are always exceptions, but, but most of them are looking for love, are looking for deep relationships. Whereas the gay guys that I've worked with, they're having too much casual sex and they can't make connections with people. So, so what I'm saying is, there is a big difference between the sexes and what they want. And in fact, you often see that the hyper-feminine lesbians are much less common than porn would have you believe. Um, and if you look at um, the, you know, th they do exist, there are obviously they do exist, but if you look at lesbian relationships versus homosexual relationships between uh, guys, you'll see two guys predominantly great bodies looking after themselves, really preening themselves to look physically attractive. And you'll see women who are being much more relaxed about the outward physical appearance and doing much more what they like, what makes them feel comfortable and what, you know, their own identity. Whereas if I get a group of gay men, they will all kind of have that similar kind of trimmed beach body look. Whereas the lesbians will be a lot more varied and a lot more based on their personality type. And that's to do with what attracts us instantly. So as a man, we might see a woman who's physically alluring because she's dressed herself up. And there are a lot of guys who are like, oh, she asked for it. That's what, you know, she's, she's trying to attract me. And it's like, no, that's not what they're thinking. That's just how she wants to present herself. That's not necessarily that she's trying to have sex with you. So we have to remove the idea that how she dresses is an invitation to approach because it isn't. And instead, we have to look for her body language as the sign that someone wants us to approach them. Now, there have been multiple studies that have been done to show what women will do and men will do as a sign that they want someone to approach them. And we call these, or I call these, the signs of attraction. It's the signs that somebody wants you to approach or approach invitations. The biggest one is locking eye contact and smiling. If someone's engaged in what they're doing, they don't really notice anyone else in the room. If someone wants to engage others, they're much more likely to look around the room, turn their head around and see people. If they lock eye contact with you and they're willing to smile, it's usually a sign that they're open to communication. That doesn't mean they want to date you. I want to be really clear about that. They're not going to look at you and smile and then you can go up to them and be like, all right, your place or mine. That's not going to work. Instead, you want to start thinking of that smile is just an invitation to approach. And I would almost always recommend a pre-approach in response to that. And we'll talk about that a little bit later on. Um, so that's one of the key things that I look for. Another thing I look for is people looking for help. Um, we spoke earlier about investment being a key trigger and attraction. When somebody wants to meet others, they often become a little bit helpless. They want help, they want advice. People that are lost looking around trying to find something. Spoke earlier about the importance of going to conventions. That's a great place to meet people who are like killing time and, and looking around, not looking to do something. If you see somebody on her own and she's like looking around, she's looking a bit awkward, you're like, hey, can I help you? Very friendly, very normal, it's not creepy. She can say no, at which point you go, okay, cool, no problem. Or she can say actually yes, and then you get to aid. Now remember, that's gonna make you like her, not her like you. But still, we're starting a conversation, and that can go somewhere. Um, other things that you're looking for are um, signs that somebody is repeatedly looking at you and um, looking away again. We call it like a, a coy look. It's when somebody looks, looks away, looks back, looks away. Um, and when that happens, a good thing to do is to look at them and smile and see if they mimic your smile. If they don't mimic your smile, there is a chance actually that they're creeped out by you. And a really good thing to do is not approach that person. Um, but if they smile back at you, it's usually a good sign that they're interested in you and they're smiling from across the room and they want you to go and talk to them. Um, and so, again, it's another great opportunity to go and approach. And I think something that anyone who's studying from me really needs to get into their, hand, uh, into their head is it's up to you to lead the interaction. Mostly because they're not a student of mine and many people are willing to let opportunity pass them by because they just don't know what to do. They don't know if what they're seeing is a real sign of attraction because no one said to them, hey, this is a sign of attraction. Um, so look for those kind of signs. If someone bumps into you, it's almost always an opportunity to talk to them. Uh, a very common way that um, people that are nervous about talking to people do is they'll break a physical barrier. And they'll, they'll often, there'll be a reason for it. They'll be like trying to get to the bar or trying to do something. But that bump is often a sign they want to talk. And an easy thing you can just say to them is like, hey, you okay? The assumption is if someone's bumped into you, maybe you were in their way, maybe they tripped, maybe something happened, 
a very natural response. Are you okay? And it lets them say to you, yes, no. <coughs> and it lets you read how willing they are to have a conversation with you. And so these are like what I would consider the key pre-approach invitations. But then we get into the actual signs that someone wants the conversation to keep going. Are they squaring up their body with you? If someone's walking while in transition, like they're walking, sorry, talking while in transition, they're talking to you while walking away, that's usually a sign that they don't really want that conversation to continue. However, if when they bump into you and you say, hey, you okay, they turn, look at you face on, they're like, oh my God, I absolutely am. I was just trying to get to the bar, I'm getting my friends a drink. This person wants to chat. And so we can read that sign as it is, this is a person who wants to have a conversation. Not a sign that a person wants to have sex, just that they want a conversation. And so um, there are other key signs. If they will look at you and they smile and giggle and put their hair behind their ear, that's a great sign this person <coughs> is potentially flirting with you. Not saying they are, potentially. I read all body language cues, not as definites, but always as potentiallys. And so I will test every body language cue to confirm that that is what it looks like. But I never take it for granted because sometimes people just have an itchy ear. Sometimes somebody is just nervous. And so I want to be reading them as potentials, but you know, exploring and seeing what happens, seeing if there is interest. Also remember that people mimic facial expressions. If someone bumps into you and you look at them and you're like, they're gonna go, because <laughs> they mimic that expression. We do it as kids, we do it as babies, it's natural. I can't tell you how many times I see to guys and I'm like, hey, and then they'll say to me, like I'll have a student who'll come up to me and be like, every time I approach somebody, like actually it happened to a couple of girls I had recently as well, they'll be like, every time I approach somebody, they always give me a really weird look. I'm like, okay, what do you look like when you approach them? And they're like, just normal. And they'll, they'll show me and they'll be up to them and go, hey, excuse me, I just want to ask you a question. And they go like this frown face, they're like this. And the person's like, what do you want? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, they just don't seem friendly. I'm like, you don't seem friendly. You get up to random strangers, you're like, I just want to ask you something. Like, it's, it scares them. They don't, they don't want to deal with that. Whereas when I approach somebody, I'm always like smiling, half laughing. I'm like, hey, just want to ask you a question. Big smile, laughing a bit. And they'll have to say, hey, what's up? And now I've got my approach invitation. I've got at least someone who's friendly, and then I can hold the conversation. If I'm like, hey, can I ask you a question? They're like, no. I'm like, sorry, I didn't mean to bother you. And off. I don't need to bug that person. They let me know what they're interested in. And it's this being aware of someone's body language is what makes this much easier for you. When someone's attracted to you, they will increase the signs of, these, um, of, of attraction. So they will physically show you more and more signs they're interested. And the key thing we're looking for is their physical interest in us. The more their body is squared at us, leaning in towards us and touching us, there's positive signs. The more they're leaning back, looking away, trying to get out of there, negative signs. So you can sit and learn. I think there are like 52 recorded signs that someone's physically into you. But rather than making a list and memorizing all 52, just remember that all of them pretty much revolve around someone touching you, looking at you, leaning into you, smiling, laughing at what you say, or touching themselves inappropriately while they're looking at you. I think these are all the common signs. It's like if a girl's looking at you and talking and she's like hoisting her, her skirt up to show you her leg, she's probably interested in you. Or if a, if a guy is looking at you and he's like flexing his biceps, he's probably interested in you. Um, so these are kind of like the common signs that we're looking at. And the more of these signs we see, we're just seeing it's an invitation to keep this interaction going further. Now remember, um, most people develop friendships with people they're attracted to. It's very rare that someone will just meet a random person and say, you know what, I want to be a friend with this random person. It, there's usually an element of attraction around it. So don't feel weirded out by the fact that you might meet somebody and they might be attracted to you and you suddenly might not be interested in them. You initiate that interaction. You've now found yourself in a situation where someone's attracted to you. You are also not beholden to them to date them. You can just have a friendship. And that's absolutely acceptable. And if I could get you guys to walk away from this seminar with like one key element, it would be the importance of knowing that a friendship is okay. If you just get a friendship out of an interaction, that's completely fine.